Hi everyone, Mrs. Lights here. Today we're talking about crime scene investigation. Hopefully after this unit you will have learned the steps to take when processing a crime scene and the steps and the order those steps occur in, uh, the type of evidence that determines what packaging should be used when collecting evidence, and why the chain of custody must be preserved, why we can't go out of order, for instance, when relaying information about a crime. After this unit, you will be able to record, isolate, and search for evidence at a mock crime scene. And you should also be able to collect and package evidence at a mock crime scene using proper forensic procedures. Some things to think about when investigating a crime. It must be proven that a crime actually did occur and that the person charged with the crime was responsible for the crime. Some top reasons for committing a crime have been found to be money, revenge, and emotion love, hate, anger, getting back at people, uh, they all tie in together. Sources of evidence might be the body, uh, primary and or secondary crime scene, as well as a suspect. So you can tie evidence between what's found on the body and on a suspect. The team at a crime scene. Uh, there's many people that are integral components in investigating a crime and every person is trained specifically in their field. So some of those team members might be the first police officer on the scene, it might be a re first responder, uh, medics if necessary, investigators, absolutely, uh, medical examiners if necessary, and definitely photographer or field evidence technicians who can collect uh, evidence, photograph it, record it, as well as lab experts. When processing a crime scene, it's important that certain steps are followed in specific orders. Uh, one of the very first steps that must occur is isolation and securing the scene so that no one contaminates any of the evidence. Documenting the scene, which could be recording, uh, video recording, could be f uh, photographing, it could be uh, drawings of the scene. Searching for evidence, collecting and packaging evidence, maintaining the chain of custody and then submitting evidence to the crime lab. The first officer on the scene must think of the acronym ADAPT. Assess the crime scene and assist those are hurt. It's important that you don't overlook someone that could actually need medical help. Detain the witness if they're there, arrest the perpetrator, protect the crime scene, and take notes on the crime scene. Crime scene survey occurs by walking through initially, so performed by the crime scene investigator, the first officer, and also sometimes the lead detective. Purpose is to mentally prepare a reconstruction theory, note any transient or conditional evidence that could change over time, so transient means something that can change, uh, weather conditions, which can also affect or cause changes in the crime scene, uh, points of entry or exit, any uh, paths of travel that are, that are evident in the crime scene any initial observations of who, what, when, where, and how that would be involved, and identify special needs within the crime scene for personnel, precautions, or equipment, notify superior officers or other agencies. For instance, sometimes there might be uh, specific equipment that's needed to get to a floor of a building that maybe there, there was a fire and you can't take the steps to get up to the second floor because they collapsed. Uh, there might be specific equipment that's needed to access all the parts of the crime scene. Documentation. You need notes, date, time, description of location, weather, environmental conditions, description of the crime as available, location of evidence relative to other key points, names of all people involved, modifications that have occurred, and other relevant information. Modifications are any changes that could have taken place during the investigation. Photography, photos of the scene, uh, like I said before, this can also now is leading more into videography uh, with narration. Sketches are still an important part, even though we have so much photography and videography. Uh, sketches will still be taken of a crime scene, and it includes date, time, scale, reference points, distance measurements, names of any investigators, victims, suspects, and a legend. Some different search methods that are used in a crime scene, line or strip method, grid method, zone method, wheel or ray method, and spiral method. Uh, my next screen has visual pictures of each, but this also talks about when 
it's best to use each method. So for instance, the strip method, outdoor, grid method uh, is more time consuming. So maybe if you're looking for something specific or it's just, um, it is a lot more involved. Zone method, this is good if you have different rooms in a house so you can focus people on different zones. Wheel array method might be when their uh, area is sort of circular and spiral method uh, if you don't have any physical barriers blocking you from moving inward or outward. And here's a diagram showing you the different kind of uh, search patterns that could be used to try to cover the most ground possible. Crime scene sketch, here's an example. Note, take note of the dimensions that are made, measurements to uh, subjects, to points of interest, also notation of locations, the criminalist, the date, and the time. And also important, the directions, right there, compass. When you're collecting and packaging evidence, uh, it's important that one person is designated at the, uh, as the evidence collector, uh, so that way nothing is kind of lost in the mix and everything is preserved consistently. If you have multiple people, they might have different methods of collecting and packaging, so you want to keep it consistent throughout. Each item must have a separate container, sealed, labeled. Anything fragile would be collected and packaged first so that it doesn't uh, get ruined in the crime scene. Different types of evidence require specific or special collection and packaging techniques, so that's important to realize. Uh, the body of the property is the coroner or medical examiner's responsibility. The collection of evidence on the body is done by that department, so not at the crime scene. Here's an example of how most evidence would be packaged. Uh, a lot of times in a primary container, maybe like a um, small plastic cup, and then a secondary one, like a plastic bag with all of the labels on it. A chain of custody is a written record of all people who have had possession of an item of, of evidence, and it must be kept track of throughout. For reconstructing a crime scene, we have different stages, and notice they all are reminiscent of the scientific method. Uh, collecting data, proposing a hypothesis, examining, testing, and analyzing the information you have, the evidence you have, determine the significance of the evidence, and then formulating a theory. A couple of vocab words that have been introduced, but just to reiterate, uh, the difference between a medical examiner and a coroner. So a medical examiner is a medical doctor who has been trained. Uh, usually it's a pathologist and they're um, appointed by a governing body of the area versus a coroner is an elected official who doesn't normally have any special medical training. Uh, there's only four states where the coroner is an actual medical doctor. Some responsibilities of a medical examiner is to identify the deceased, establish time and death, date of death, determine the cause of death, uh, as well as the mechanism of death. So what's the reason the person died? Um, classify the manner of death. Was it natural, accidental, suicide, homicide, undetermined? And then to notify the next of kin. And that is it for today. So hopefully this helps you out. Thanks. Bye.